Hi, this is Katie. I'm going to show you how to make a traditional type of book today from Japan. This is called a stab binding, but I'm going to show you how to do it in a safer way for younger people. So instead of using an awl or something else to make holes in it, we're going to use a hole punch. An awl is too sharp, so we're not doing that. Um, and we're also going to do the binding just using a piece of tape instead of a yarn needle. So if you've got a yarn needle, that would totally work, but I'm just going to show you how to do it using tape. Um, you're just going to need some plain paper for this. Uh, my paper looks fancy because I used a little bit thicker of a paper and also a project that I liked, but I also didn't like the whole thing so I could cut it down and make something else out of it. That's a good idea with your old projects. Um, but you can just use regular paper with this. It's nice to have a different color for the cover. The rest of it is up to you. And here I'm just going to show you how to make the book itself and not what to put inside of it. This is so exciting. You can put anything in here that you want to, anything at all. So you could write a comic book, you could fill this full of recipes, you could write about different things that are happening in your life, you could do drawings of different things that you find in or outside of your house. It's totally up to you. I'll just show you how to do this safe stab binding. I'm cutting down a bunch of pieces of paper so that they're all the same size. And I've got a piece of thicker paper in here too. I'll show you that in a minute um, so that I can have covers for my book. So I'm cutting with a ruler and an X-Acto knife, but you could use scissors too. You just wanna make sure all your papers are the same size. I'm just being careful and I'm being really patient um, and nice to myself because like stuff like that happens that's okay it doesn't matter just be nice to yourself okay I'm gonna back my ruler up a little bit and recut that because it's a little funny and I actually have this cool cutting mat so I'm gonna use that and line everything up and I can use these measurement lines but again you can totally use scissors. You just wanna make sure everything is the same size. So I've got a stack of paper for the inside. I've got a front cover and I have a back cover that I quite like. And then the next thing I'm gonna do, I also have this cool decorative paper that I made um, using fruit and vegetable stamps. So I'm gonna use that too, because I really like it. Um, I think that'll be a good, front cover and I'm gonna put this stuff in the middle right on I have a piece of paper that's the same size as my other papers and I'm gonna use this to measure where I'm gonna put the holes so my piece of paper is, is about five inches um, and I'm gonna make a mark every inch this is pretty easy so and I'm gonna try to make it in the same spot um, which I can figure out in just a second do, 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 do. I'm just gonna do it on that inch line and I make a little bit of a measurement all the way across even amount away from the spine so I'm finding where I put those dots and I'm gonna punch a hole in here where this little X is and I will be able to more easily make my holes even in my pages because I have too many pages to be able to just punch it once so great four holes that looks pretty good and now I'm gonna slowly use my hole punch to um, oh that's a little bit smaller it's okay slowly use my hole punch to make those holes in all of my pages so I'll show you some of it. Um, this might take me a little while, so see I'm taking my whole bunch, lining it up where those holes are. Awesome. Put this to the side. And I'm going to do it again and again and again. So since the cover paper is thicker, I'm not going to use as many of the inside pages for that part. This guide really helps me if I want to have a lot of pages when I'm doing this. So, and I'm making sure to lay that paper down the same way each time 
so that they will end up lining up. And I did measure it, but it's not going to be perfect because nothing in the world is perfect. Now, book binders do this stuff with an awl, which is a really pokey thing, and with needles that are attached to special string. That's just a little bit thicker than thread and strong. Um, we're just gonna use yarn and a whole bunch because that's easier. Because of the way that I just, after I punched the paper, put it over to the side, all the, line, all the holes line up. So that's pretty easy to do. It's pretty easy to deal with. And so all those holes are pretty much lined up. I'm gonna take after this, I'm gonna take my clothespins and pin over to the side. And then I'm gonna get my yarn ready. Okay, are you ready to bind this book? I'm excited for that. So I have a piece of string that's as long as my arms. You could be a little bit shorter than that, but you don't want it to be any shorter than one of your arms because you need one long big piece of string. So you, whatever you have, if you've got string, if you've got yarn, anything will work. It needs to be stronger than thread, but anything thicker than that will work. Um, and you could even use a plastic bag. If you look at my plastic bag yarn tutorial, I don't think a t-shirt would work. I think that's too, probably too thick. And then you're gonna take some tape, take a little piece of tape off of, this is just, this is just whatever kind of tape you have will be totally fine. And then you're gonna wrap it around the loose end of your yarn. So I'm trying to get this on there pretty tight. I am going to use this instead of a needle. If I had masking tape, I think that would be a little bit better, but I don't have that right now, so I'm using this tape. Anything that you have will totally work. Uh, this is a good way to make uh, yarn not fray. And also, it's hard, so it'll help us when we're binding. And so this is the front cover of my book, and this is the back cover. What I'm going to do is go through this third hole from the top or the second hole from the bottom up through the back with this pull my yarn so that I have a piece hanging off that's a little bit longer than my finger and then I'm going to go right back through that same hole so I pulled my yarn a little bit to the side so that was easier and go through that same hole so I have a loop here you see that? The next thing I'm going to do is go up here with my yarn. And you could use a yarn needle if you had that, but you know, this works totally fine. So I'm just showing you the, the way with le less materials. I'm going to do the same thing that I did here. I'm going back through my hole. And this is stuck on my clothespin. Wow, that really got stuck on my clothespin. It's amazing. Okay, that's what happens sometimes. It's, uh, that totally got tangled and everything so I'm gonna have to retape that that's fine it's good that this happens though when you're watching me because you can see this stuff happens to everybody don't be frustrated just keep going keep keep trying okay so I'm gonna wrap that tape around the end again la, 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 la. these clothespins are important though I don't want this stuff to shift around I'm gonna try this again I'm gonna go back through that hole and be careful of my clothespin. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna go under this way because I'm trying to get to this next hole closer to the top of the book. This is the one that's closest to the top of the book. And I'm gonna pull, 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 pull. And I'm gonna do the same thing again. In and around that way. And so that stuff is done. Um, and then I'm gonna go around the top, which is quite exciting, and go back in through that same hole again. And because I pulled pretty tight, I do have room to do that. If you had a needle on your yarn, it might be easier to do that. But just keep trying. If it comes off, retape it. No problem. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that tight. Make sure that's tight. And I'm going to go on to the next hole again, go back through there. And then, awesome. 
And then I'm gonna go back through this one. And so I may need to pull this yarn to the side so that I have enough room, that's fine. No problem. And then I'm gonna go over to this next hole closest to the bottom of the book. That's so cool. And then I'm gonna go back again and do the same thing that I did before. Back through that hole. And then back around that, just like I did on the top. Around, around. Through this hole. And I'm being careful. I think my yarn is too long. That's okay. If it was a little bit shorter, ooh. <laughs> there you go. That's what I wanted. Um, if it was a little bit shorter, it might be um, easier to deal with. Okay, here's the next part. Now, you could just tie a knot right here. A double knot. That's one knot and then another knot. And then let's show you what that looks like. So there would be a knot right there. And that might be the best answer. Um, you could also go underneath this with your fake needle over here and then tie your double knot right here. Then the knot would be next to this hole. Double knot, two knots in a row. And then what you're gonna do is trim that little end right there. Don't trim too close because you don't wanna take your knot off. Um, there you go, no stab, stab, stab binding. Very exciting, and you can put anything you want to at all in that book. It's a good sketchbook, because it's a big blank book. You might also want to write important things that are happening in your life in there. A good journal. Nature journal is fun too. All right, whatever you want to do, put it in that book and have fun.